An uptick in political theater recently was the return of Gilles de Sepp. Bit of a J.R. Tolkien thing there. Despite that, it's hard to see any revival of the Bloc Québécois at this time, following the near fatal trouncing it got from the NDP in Quebec last time. Why would Mr. de Sepp do better now, having long vacated the scene in defeat, than previously when he had continuously been leader is an interesting puzzle. It has to do, I think, with Thomas Mulcair. Mr. Mulcair is proving to be, in ever so gradual, ever so step-by-step -step manner, the hidden, subdued factor in the great national race. It's a little like the ant and the grasshopper fable. For a while, despite their third place standing, just 30 plus seats, it looked all sunshine for the liberals. Their leaders mesmerized some of the press and poor Tom Mulcair, a wallflower at his own dance, was blithely passed over for more diverting coverage. However, there came C-51, the terror bill, which was introduced in the dark shadow of that day in Ottawa on the death of Corporal Cirillo. And Mr. Mulcair, even in that moment, came out against the popular mood and challenged it. The Conservatives thought they had a real game changer. The polls then certainly backed them up. And the Liberals, well, they made their first really bad choice. They opposed it verbally, but supported it legislatively. That is, they said they thought it was bad, voted for it anyway, and then promised to change it once, or if, they made the government. That was Mulcair's real moment. As support faded for Bill C-51, his stand woke up many voters. And then there was, and is, his position on the Senate. He's against it. He really is. He wants to abolish it. Now, many bright and knowing minds point out that this is near impossible. And it is, because it requires constitutional change. Opening up that great document is always more of a test than it seems. But on the Senate, I think Mulcair's position, even if not practical, has this advantage. It aligns him with the mood of the voters. And after this week's Auditor General's report, even more so. Taken as an expression of what he wishes he could do, as a judgment on the Senate's actions, rather than a proposal that will actually happen, as a signal more than substance, it shows him in harmony with the sentiment of most Canadians. The Harper Conservatives are in a fixed block, nowhere barring large events to grow. The Liberals are losing their cachet, their gloss, at the worst possible moment. And then there is Thomas Mulcair, unglamorous, not showy, stirring up the block, hence Mr. Duceppe's revival, outpacing the Liberals and staring down the Conservatives. Watch for the first Conservative ad that does not feature Justin Trudeau, that goes after angry Tom, and you will know that the world, at least that little part of it that is Canadian politics, is on a different path. For The National, I'm Rex Murphy.